Hey there, I'm Renee Hobbs and welcome to Across the Generations with Media Literacy. Um, Media Education Lab webinars are a chance for our community together to come together for dialogue and discussion. And all hey there, year long, and welcome ooh, there to we go. Across the Generations with Media. That happens every time. Now I know the recording is working. Um, for the last uh, six or seven months, we have been on a journey uh, trying to think about the developmental dimensions of media literacy learning across the lifespan. We started with preschool, then we explored elementary school, middle school, high school, college students, teachers, law enforcement professionals, and now we're finally here thinking about seniors. And in two weeks in our closing session, we're going to be thinking about intergenerational dialogue and media literacy learning. Um, but um, as they say, in all things, I have some good news and some bad news. Which would you like to hear first, the good news or the bad news? Bad news. Bad, bad news. news. Bad news. Okay, yeah, let's get it over with. So our featured presenter for today uh, Pavi uh, Ryson from Finland, uh, up in Lapland at the University of Lapland, the world's expert on media literacy for seniors, scratched. She is unable to participate today. But now, would you like the good news? Yes, of course. So the good news is, is that we're going to continue. We're not canceling this session. We're going to cancel it. We're going to carry on with this session with a unique pedagogy that we think you will enjoy and that will be um, that you will find useful and maybe you'll help us improve it, make it better and all of the rest. Uh, okay, so you up for like a, a little bit of um, not the way we usually do it, but should be fun, right? So we don't have a guest, uh, uh, an expert guest to guide us. We're going to just have to guide ourselves, right? Parazad, I see you have your hand raised. Unmute your microphone. I was just agreeing with you that we're going to have fun. No, it's not a hand raising. I'm just uh, uh, thinking oh. of what you are telling because this is a really interesting point. I mean, the pedagogy. Yeah. Media yeah, we're going to, that's right. We're going to model a pedagogy that you can use as a non-expert to explore a topic with a group, because this is a big part of what media literacy learning entails. We're co-learners. I don't know very much about media literacy and seniors, but uh, together we're going to learn more, right? So Renee, um, I, I would mm -hmm. recommend, I read her article. I can, I'm afraid to say her name that I'll just make a mess. Uh, but I've uh -huh. read her articles and they are excellent in terms of getting to what you need to work with seniors, with old people. And I could say that because I'm an old person. So highly recommend it. And this is what I want to do when I finish my certificate in May is work with adults to, to bring the tools to decode. Maybe it'll help our country to have less, be less agitated toward one another. I appreciate that, Barbara. And what I'd like to do is invite you to put in the chat, why are you interested in this topic? Media literacy for seniors. Barbara just gave us a good start to that, but you're coming for a lot of different reasons, right? So please feel free to, in the chat, just it, it, identify this topic is important to you for one reason or another, why? And I'm letting people into the chat as I'm reading the chat. Please, someone put the name in the chat so I can find the papers. Oh, yeah, we'll definitely put the link to the papers in the chat or send you a post event uh, email with those details. And Renee, they're in the JM. You, you were the one that sent me the articles, to be honest. I know. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> they're in That's the why journal. I'm so sad about having delivered the bad news that Pavey is not able to join us. But I love this idea. Pam says her local libraries asked her to present on this topic. And April says the senior population is huge. And Jeffrey recommends, oh, cool, the brainwashing of my dad. Yes, I loved that documentary. <laughs> 
That <laughs> was awesome. These are all things we could explore because we know they're important. Um, but today, what I'd like to do is I'm going to start at the beginning of this slide deck. Here we go. Let me see. Can you guys see that now? Can you guys see that slide deck? Today, what we're going to yes. do... Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore a program called Media Wise for Seniors, which was produced by the Pointer Institute, right? And we don't know much about this program, but by the end of the hour in just 50 minutes or so, we're gonna learn a lot more. Um, here's the structure that we're gonna use for our time together. Uh, we started with our check-in, which is why do you care about this topic? And then we're gonna go on what's called a guided exploration of media wise for seniors. A guided exploration is where we take turns driving, right? We take turns driving to explore the website, yeah. right? We, uh, I start and I drive for five minutes and then I pass it off to somebody and then uh, you drive for five minutes and we'll take about mm, 20, 20 minutes to explore this website. And then we'll break up into small groups and We'll continue our exploration, that's a good thing to do, but we'll ask these questions. What did you notice as you explored the materials? What did you appreciate and value about the Media Wise for Seniors program? What questions did the review experience raise for you? And what would you like to see added, altered, or changed? And, and we'll do that in small groups, and then we'll come back and do some large group synthesis. So in other words, our usual procedure um, except this time, instead of an expert presenter, we're going to have a guided exploration where we each take turns driving to explore the website. Now, the Pointer uh, MediaWise for Seniors program was developed by Alex Mah Mahadevan, I think. He's the director of MediaWise at the Pointer Institute, and he's taught digital media literacy to thousands of middle and high school st uh, students and has trained hundreds of international journalists in verification and digital investigation tools. And if I hadn't had such late notice about the scratch, I would have invited him to be here. <laughs> but, oh well, hopefully he'll be watching the YouTube video or I'll send him the recording, right? So we're, we're honored to be able to take a look at Alex's work uh, and, and talk talk about this work uh, as, as a group. Now, not everyone is familiar with how we go about the process of doing a guided review of curriculum. And this curriculum for seniors, it's a curriculum, right? So this might be familiar to you as an educator, but not everyone is familiar with how to review curriculum. Here are some kinds of questions that you could consider when looking at a set of curriculum materials. Is the content relevant to the intended learners? Is it as up to date as possible? Are there any gaps in the content that need to be addressed? Are there any topics that should be deleted? Is the organization of the content reasonable? Uh, those are questions we can ask about the content of the curriculum. And then there are questions we can ask about the instructional methods. We're gonna be looking at a free self-guided online course. Mm. Well, that already says something about the instructional methods, doesn't it, right? So this is not a program that will be delivered in a library with people sitting around a circle. This is not a program that will be delivered in a computer lab with every uh, participant at a computer. This is a program that's a self-paced online course. As we look at this course, we can't, so we can't judge it by any other standards, except that's what it is, right? But we can ask, do the goals, objectives, teaching strategies, and learner evaluation strategies make sense when taken together? Are the teaching strategies likely to lead to the transfer of learning? Are the ob objectives appropriate and attainable given the time allotted? And are there other ways this topic could be addressed? So you'll be keeping those questions in mind as you take a look at the materials. So we're gonna access the free online course and we're gonna explore it through guided exploration. And then we'll go into small groups and do some more discussion. So I'm gonna just click here and I'm gonna send you this link 
So if you want, you can parallel play. A lot of people like to parallel play. I'm putting that um, link to this course in the chat. So Renee, can, excuse yep. me. There are these black blocks that it oh, seems to be pervading the presentation. I know. Let me see if I can fix that. Hold on. Is that better? Well, they're now on the left side. Now let me try. But see, then I then I can't see my chat. I but I, I, you, I think it's probably better for you now, right? This is good. There's one more left that's at the bottom. Nothing. Beautiful. Okay, good show. Okay, um, thank you so much. No worries. No worries. So here we are at the Pointer website for how to spot misinformation online. I can see that it's a free course. I can log in to enroll. And when I scroll down, I see that it was released in July of 2021. And it's a self-directed course. And that it's going to take me about an hour to two hours to get through it. So, but look at this. <gasps> cool. Famous journalists will pop in and share their advice as experienced journalists to help me navigate information. So celebrities like uh, Christine Amanpour uh, and Hari Srinivasan and Dave Jorgensen and Joan London and Lester Holt. So some journalists are going to be coming in and that already gives me some ideas about what to expect. Now, just looking at this page without doing anything more, what do you expect? Let's confront our expectations at the very beginning before we even start. That's a good way to start a guided exploration. I'll hear from three people. Based on just looking at that one page, what do you expect? We I'm haven't not explored it yet, but you have expectations, Carolyn. I'm a little concerned that I have to log in to view the site. I'm thinking that it's really a mechanism for data collection. Thank you for sharing. I'll hear some from other folks. What do you expect just based on that one, that one, uh, looking at that one page? We're confronting our expectations and sharing them. I, uh, Susan. I'm, yeah. Hi, Susan. So glad to see you. What are your expectations from just looking at that one page? Microphone, unmute your microphone. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> Hi, Renee. Uh, uh, I'm expecting something credible and well done. The fact uh, it, according to how I evaluate a website, it, it looks legitimate. It, uh, it's laid out well, all the words are spelled correctly. Um, and, and it's naming people who I uh, respect as journalists. So I'm looking forward to it. Nice. And I'll hear from one more person. Open your microphone. Tell me, what are you expecting? Alicia. Hi. I, hi. hi. You know, with the um, listing of journalists there, I am actually wondering if the media focus will actually be more news oriented than anything else. Mm. Interesting. Thank you so much. So you have some predictions about the content, right? Based on the way this, the story is told with all those expert journalists. Okay, so back to sharing the screen. And now I have to move through this enrollment process. Oh, isn't that fun? And thanks for making me feel nervous about it with the whole data collection and all, but hey, I'm not nervous. I'm registering, I'm registering. Okay, and I'm admitting people to the waiting room and oh, I did the password wrong. Look, you guys, <sighs> let's try a different password. Maybe a password with all of the things they want in a password. Okay, I'm not a robot and I'm registering. Okay, I'm in, I believe. Maybe I'm in. I'm in yeah, to the Pointer Center yeah. website. Yeah. But now where did my, where did my course go? Hmm, hmm. I oh, wait, hold on, get media wise. 
So I guess when I registered, I registered to the pointer center. And now I'm looking for media wise. There's all kinds of stuff here, but I want to see the seniors part of it. Yikes, where did it go? Oh, wait a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just trying to find MediaWise, I stumbled into something and I want to have you guys help me interpret it. What meaning do you make of this list of these are supporters of MediaWise? Looks good. What do you notice? It, it's a mixed bag. Well, say more. Well, you've got Meta and TikTok and Google. And I have to question, what are they doing there? Of course, I know the answer. It has to do with collecting data and gaining more access to people to improve, to not improve, to, um, to keep their brand moving forward. TikTok has just been banned from federal government um, computers. So, so Barbara, that, this so this list makes you suspicious. Oh, I worry. I, I hear it. But yeah. not everybody of our 28 participants sees it that same way. Can anybody else comment on what meaning do you make of this list? These are partners for the MediaWise team. I see some I recognize, like namely, which I have a lot of respect mm -hmm. for, PBS, uh, and AALP, which I'm a member of. Yeah. So some of them I like. Um, yeah. But yeah, then then I like Meta. You know, they're probably on there just making stuff look good. <laughs> okay, so we have some different interpretations. Um, and since I still didn't find Media Wise for seniors, you know, I'm and I'm just thinking about. Uh, I want to type Media Wise for seniors up here and see if I can get direct. Ooh, seniors! I want to see if I can get right to it. Can I get right to it from this page? I hope so. Please say I can. Media wise. Renee, at the top right, there is my courses. And if you pull down, it's in there. <gasps> oh, you rock, Carolyn. Now, Carolyn, you have, you know how to do uh, this. You've played this game before with me. So now you're <laughs> in the driver's seat, my friend. I pull it down, but where am I pulling it down? And it's not pulling. So I went to my courses mm -hmm. and then to courses. over to the left in a black toolbar, I see media wise, my account, my courses, you see media wise. I'm not but maybe that. that's for you. Is that for you? Have you taken the class before? Renee hasn't signed for the class. Yet. That's it right there. That's it. Okay. I'm going to enroll this way. Now that I'm logged in, I think maybe it will show up. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I had to oh, put it yes. in. Yes, okay, in. cool. Look, look, look. Now, Carolyn, you are now driving. And so I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna invite you to share and we're gonna watch as you navigate. You're gonna make some choices for about five minutes. Share your screen with us and let's explore this a website together, shall we? Now, as Carolyn explores, you are welcome to unmute your microphone and comment or ask questions, and you can use the chat to do that as well. Cool. Um, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Renee. I am spending, I'm like half listening to you and I'm half trying to register on my phone. Yeah, so Gretchen, and don't it do will that. Not, it don't will do not. that. Gretchen, right, don't do that. Just single task and watch the webinar. Okay. And then afterwards, because you can do the other it, thing. It's not accepting a Gmail account. Yeah, so there you go. So we're watch the webinar, participate okay. in the program, and then that, that can be your homework, okay? okay? Cool. Okay, so Carolyn, take us and explore the site with us. So let's, let's take a look at this curriculum, shall we? And Carolyn, you're you're um, you're talking me through your choices as you go to the my courses and open up that page. And I'm seeing only the main page of Pointer. I'm not seeing. Oh yeah, there you're scrolling down, and you're clicking on my courses. Carolyn, where 
Oh, where is there's where? a there's a tab at the top that says media literacy second from the right. Carolyn, you're unmuting your microphone so we can hear you. There you go. Carolyn, unmute your microphone so we can hear you. Ariel, I see your hand is raised. May, may I may I make a comment? Yeah. Okay, so I'm in the course overview of uh, the course that we're looking at. Uh, I read through it and then it says at, at the bottom there, after you go and see the sponsors, it says next lesson. So each page is, ar is arranged where whatever information you need would be in, in that, because I believe it said, uh, I can't remember how many sections there are, but basically after you review the introduction, you click at the bottom right, you go to next lesson and introduction to fact checking. So that's, and it shows you on top, there's a progress bar. Um, I'm 5% complete out of one of 20 stages. Nice. So I just wanted uh, to say that it, it shows the person and it says if you're under 50, uh, well, it doesn't say if you're under 50, but it basically says right away, this is designed for people 50 and older. Okay. So that was nice to see. Nice. So uh, based on that, Ariel, what I just did was I started the course and I can see over here in this left-hand column is like the outline. I'm in intro to fact checking right now. And the questions are, what is MediaWise for seniors? Why is misinformation so dangerous? Who is spreading information and how do they do it? How to spot misinformation, three key questions. Ariel, which one of these topics should I open up to look at? Um, go any, meeny, miny, mo. <laughs> you know me, I'm always playful. Okay, here we go. You did it. Uh, it looks like, can I go right to it? No, it looks yeah, like I have to right proceed to in question. order, don't I? I guess so. Oh. Yeah. Is that true? Oh, no, look, look, it just took a little while. It's leaped me to how to spot misinformation, three key questions, whether it comes from a neighbor or a stranger, whether it's intended to harm or not, misinformation can have devastating consequences with so much at stake. You have to fight misinformation. There is a starting place to fact check the things you see online. The Stanford History Education Group conducted a research study in 2015 looking at college students, fact checkers and historians. They found that fact checkers were better at de determining what was reliable on the internet. They the fact checkers mecker boiled down into three questions. Who's behind the information? What's the evidence? And what do other sources say? Okay, write these questions down. They can be incredibly helpful. Joan London explains more. Hi everyone, Joan London again. Can you guys hear that? Yes. Great. You know, we spend an awful lot of time online these days, and sometimes it can be difficult to weed out what's true and false on our timelines. Misinformation, it can take many, many forms. And sometimes false claims aren't so blatantly obvious. So if you come across something that you're just not sure about, it's really important that you give it a fact check before you reshare it. So now I am going to show you the most important technique that we will come back to all throughout this course. Always ask yourself three quick questions. And these questions were developed by the Stanford History Education Group. Number one, who's behind the information? This might be the most important question. So do a little digging and look into who shared this and why. Are they an expert? or would they have something to gain from you resharing it? What is the evidence is number two. What proof did they give you to back up their claim? Maybe links to studies, testimonials, photos, videos. And finally, number three, what are other sources saying? So here's where you have to get off the page that you're on 
this means you get out of your own little echo chamber, to learn what multiple sources are reporting. A variety in platforms and perspective will give you great context. So these are the same questions that professional journalists and fact checkers use, so you know that they work. I can tell you. Okay. Um, we can move through the next lesson, but I think you've had a taste of the program, right? Um, I can see that each lesson has different topics, including topics like algorithms and social media. I can open up the topics to see what they include. And now it's your turn. You've already formed some preliminary impressions. In fact, you've probably already decided whether you want to continue to explore this website or just chuck it, throw it away, right? You've already formed some impressions, even from that, just that little bit of a tour. But I want you to keep an open mind as we go into the next section, our small group uh, discussions. I'm going to um, break you into groups of about five, maybe five or six people. And I'd like you to think about these questions. Oh, sorry. I'd like you to think about these questions. What did you notice? What did you appreciate and value? What questions did the review experience raise for you? And what might you like to see added or changed? You're free in your group to address those questions in any way you like. And you can see I've put them in the chat for you. But now, you're about to move into small groups. Before I put you into groups, do you have any comments or questions? We're basically sharing our perspectives and interpretations. Your group can have one person continue to explore and guide uh, kind of a tour. You can just jump into one of those questions that's interesting to you. You decide what to talk about, but we're gonna give you about 20 minutes to do that. Give me a thumbs up if you have an understanding of what's going to happen in these small groups. Do me a favor if you don't know, uh, introduce yourselves to each other. This is a networking opportunity. Uh, make sure everybody gets a chance to make a contribution. Rooms are open now. We'll see you back here in the big room in about 20 minutes. Have a great conversation.
Hey, how are you? Hey, Renee. Hey, how are you? I'm good. We never have enough time. We're so excited. I know. So excited to be with each other and learn about what we're thinking and doing and wanting to do. I know. I know. But the only good thing is since we see each other every week. Yeah. <laughs> right. I feel very close to Barbara. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. And Wade and I get to hang out every week too. I'm, I'm liking yeah. it. It's working. Yeah. And I'm getting used to seeing Wade too. Yeah. 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 Okay. Here they are. They're back. Hey, you're back. Okay. So um, I hope you had a good discussion. And of course it was not long enough. I am absolutely aware of that. You were just starting to make some progress and we ripped you out of your group. And now we want to do some large group discussion, but I do think that it's likely that stuff came up that we want to share with the whole group, right? And so this time as a way to model this guided exploration process a bit further, I think you're seeing my screen right now, right? And I think you're seeing the media literacy for page. I'm going to reopen that slide deck that I started with at the beginning of this hour. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to listen and annotate as you talk. I want to hear some insights from your discussion. So unmute your microphone and I'll type while you talk. What idea? Well, one, one, of the, one of the things that Barbara said was, I, and I'm gonna, re, I'm gonna paraphrase her and add on to it, is that we have to be aware of what kind of media are we discussing with our, uh, with our group. No, I mean, with I'm going to say our students, what kind of media are we discussing? Because Barbara brought up the fact that we're, it seems like sometimes we ignore print media. And I agree. I, I ignore it. My, my focus is on the web. Um, so when we're talking about seniors being really clear, what is the media we're discussing? Ooh, I'm, assuming, nice. I'm assuming we don't have time in those little lessons with seniors to talk about all the media. Um, maybe it's a, a three session where we do TV one time, print another and internet another. I very much appreciate that comment. Thank you for sharing. Who's next? What insights came up from your discussion? Uh, I can share. Sorry, I came a little late, but we talked about how difficult it is for Pointer to get into the workflow, uh, information workflow, likely of most uh, seniors. And I brought up PragerU as a successful counter example. And why is there not, to my knowledge, a progressive example or a more truthful, shall we say, example counter to PragerU in terms of um, reaching seniors? Are you saying for, for that media there's... literacy? Wait a sec. Are you saying that there's like an ideology to this stuff? <laughs> Maybe slightly. I think. I think. Uh, I think there was a Dr. Hobbs at one point who taught me as much. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of people don't know what PragerU is. Can you just briefly explain how might it be different from Pointer? They, they are. I have. They are. Well, they're. I think they're Koch brothers, but they're. They are heavily funded, conservative but a conservative media literacy um, misinformation outlet that has done very well at embedding itself in many people's social bubbles um, and uh, making what appear on the surface, very surface to be compelling cases against uh, what they call to be mainstream media mm. claims. Beautiful. Thank you. You have ignited my curiosity. I am really fascinated by that. Microphone is open. What insights came out of your small group discussion? This is Ariel. I'm going to bring up a couple of things from uh, my group. I'll start with a comment made by, by uh, Joyce saying, um, are people really interested to become media literate? Um, perhaps they're fine being in the um, 
bubble that they're they're in. Um, we had um, in our group uh, folks who are um, um, in in courses learning um, elder tech workshop. Um, we we had a person that's a, a tech in integration coach. Um, uh, Cameron has a uh, 90 year old mother who is very tech savvy. So um, I wanted to make a connection, uh, Renee, to another session that uh, you had um, um, in regards to uh, teaching. Um, what, how do we begin teaching? That also is because people have different needs. Uh, so that becomes, and um, also was said by the group that we really only saw the beginning of the website. We didn't yeah. really have yeah. enough time, but also the question is, how is the content put together and what is the, what is the reason that, that it's put together in this way? Did, did it have, um, is there something um, behind it? Um, that's it. It was a fantastic discussion. And as you, always, you rock Ariel, that is fascinating. And you've added some very interesting, uh, thoughts about, uh, wondering, wanting to learn more about this curriculum. And I appreciate your point about needing to explore more before forming a judgment, right? We don't want to be cavalier, right? And we want to recognize that we need more exploration. We're just modeling a process. We can't do the whole process in this session, but we're modeling a process that people could use on their own. Cool. Let's hear from some others. What insights emerge from your discussion? Renee? I, I, oh, cool. Go ahead, Wade. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Good timing. I guess I got in under the buzzer. Uh, hi, Renee and everybody. Um, we had a really diverse uh, discussion on a lot of things. It was really good. And now in reflecting on it, um, I cannot help but come back and think that even though we do need to investigate the pointer uh, setup more, I totally agree. My mind just cannot help but go back to Faith Rogro's um, book and emphasis on teaching young students and why not take those same principles and just apply it to teaching basically all, but especially seniors. I don't see why it can't be the same. Aha! Interesting. So maybe it's return back to the with the with the present. I'm intrigued by That's that. Right, Susan because Rogers, we're thinking too have, much. We're thinking I love right that right, point. Yeah. I I love that point. Susan Rogers, you have your hand raised. What's another key insight from the discussion? One of our group pointed out that uh, people of a certain political persuasion would not necessarily be impressed by the journalists who were noted as being presenters in the program. And that they might even be turned off by that, feel like they're just sort of like liberal crazies or uh, people who can, not to be believed, part of the liberal media conspiracy. So they might not take the program just because they're not impressed by those particular journalists. Yeah, fascinating. Thank you for sharing that, Susan. I was stunned to see a recent AP a public opinion survey that shows that about 40% of Americans not don't just mistrust news media, they believe it is actively malevolent, right? They believe it is intentionally uh, uh, manipulating public opinion. And so you're right, those people, some people might feel like those journalists are too mainstream, too much part of the problem uh, and not the solution. Thank you for sharing that. The floor is open. What other insights emerge from your discussion? One question we had was uh, the well, actually, one question I had that we uh, or sorry, <laughs> I, we didn't quite get to this, but um, my question is: Is fact checking uh, the best way to teach people media literacy? Is is fact checking even media literacy? I would I would ask. And Woo! do we all want to be fact checkers? Doesn't fact checking indicate a certain kind? Like that is its own interest and skill. So, and generally they're paid. So I, I just was curious. <laughs> Fascinating, and I wonder if anyone wants to weigh in on that most and interesting question. It's a really, really great, great question. I personally, I don't really want to be a fact checker. I, I like to think I'm smart enough to know where to look, but I know that I'm not. Um, 
Um, the other thing I wanted to just point out, um, to go back to Wade's point about taking uh, one curriculum and applying it to another age, is I'm hearing a lot in the nonprofit world about inter, particularly libraries wanting to do intergenerational work. And so I'm actually thinking if I'm gonna develop senior programming, uh, bringing, bringing younger people in and us working together would be great a, I idea. Think, I think would be a good idea. Great idea. Inter, intergenerational programming. Jeffrey, I see your hand is raised. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, if you don't want to spend a lot of time fact checking, and I think unless you happen to be a fact checker for uh, your job, you probably don't. I think trust is really a critical aspect here. So uh, if you find sources you can trust and maybe you do fact checking and look at the, what the consensus is in an area, then eventually you develop a trusting relationship and that lowers the burden of fact checking and find multiple sources that you feel you can trust, then you're probably gonna be doing better. Great observation. George, I see your hand is raised. Uh, yes, hello everybody. I'm sorry, I just joined now very late. Uh, I, I come from an organization. We do we do media media campaigns that that works against propaganda in crisis territories. I'm based in Amsterdam. Uh, I I just want to say we deal with emotional learning rather than fact checking because uh, because very simple. You demand a lot of cognition of an audience that isn't in order to talk to other people of other emotional and attitudinal persuasions. It really, uh, these people just are not open to different cognitions. And, and, and so I think it is sometimes enough to say, if something is emotional, watch out. If something is aggressive, watch out and clothe these, the these, these, uh, these themes in much more emotional terms, which can be more understandable to, for a reactant audience. That's- Wow, big idea. And of course the chat is, um, percolating like crazy too. Um, okay, so who gets the last word? Who gets the last word? Somebody who hasn't spoken yet. Insight from this discussion, from your point of view, take away from your point of view. Barbara. Um, I'm thinking about, we're very focused on um, the internet, on, on the digital and social media. What about people that live in rural communities or people who are in the working class that don't own computers or um, don't have access? So they don't have access to the internet. Working in, in print or television, um, using the smell test, using SIFT, radio, this is you have to have a research personality to, you know, to do that. But all the same, I, I still think it's very important for though for people in those communities to have the tools. Aha! Uh -huh. So would maybe is there is there a return a turn toward uh, non digital? Uh, 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 media tools and technologies. Awesome. Okay, so, hey, listen, congratulations. You've survived the guided exploration. Let's give ourselves a round of applause. We didn't have an expert, but we did have a learning experience. Now, I wanna point out a couple of things here. You know, you're at the Media Education Lab website. You're here under events, right? And you're going to today's program, a Media Literacy for Seniors. Right here is where I've put the uh, slide deck for this session. We use this co-learning technique called guided exploration. Um, you can access the slide deck. I also have shared with you a scholarly article about the impact of MediaWise for seniors. And you can not only read it, but you can also annotate it. If you haven't used uh, digital annotation before, we are now a reading community. So you can read this article and you can add a comment on it. So if you wanna continue learning with me, read this article and watch how I comment on this article and read it for yourself. Um, and then also 
Uh, Barbara, you had asked about our expert who was unable to attend, Pavi Rossi. Um, so I've shared her article as well. Very strong uh, work here, promoting media literacy among older people. It's a systematic literature review. So it's a really good place uh, to start the journey. But listen, I want you to come back for the last program. What a ride we've had this spring semester. And in just two weeks on March 14th, we have a final session called Putting It All Together, Intergenerational Dialogue with Yanti Friesen. So I do hope you come back for our last Across the Generations program in just two weeks. So thanks for joining us today. I'm Renee Hobbs of the Media Education Lab. Love having dialogue and discussion with you guys. Thanks for being part of it. Bye now. Thanks, Renee. It always puts a smile on my face. Thank we 